I went to the allergist on my birthday this year, January 25th, good times. I was going for my second appointment. I'd gone the first time on November uh, the 7th, a date that will come up later. And I was going because it turned out that uh, I am so allergic to Missouri that I've lost a quarter of my lung function. Uh, and if I doesn't, don't get something done about it, I will be looking at long-term lung damage. Kind of terrifying, right? And uh, did anyone here have uh, the test done where they prick you and then they see how large they swell? Mine just swell into each other. There's such an intense reaction. So I'm just like allergic to everything growing in Missouri. Uh, so I, I have to go, like this is the choice. I, I either breathe or I don't breathe. So I asked them to tally up, how much is this gonna cost me? Like a year of treatment, trying to budget for the year. And so I get there and, and they prepared it for me and I sit down, checking in, Andy Kuhn, I'm here. Oh, here's your, your budget estimate, your, your estimate of cost. And I sit down and I start adding it all up. And what it will cost me to breathe this year is $6,788. And so I'm doing some back of the napkin math, because first I gotta add it up, because I have to add up the weekly shots, the inhaler, the serum, their, their tests, the, the breathing tests, all of this, and uh, that is 18% of my pre-tax income. Like, that, that's a bill. I've never been handed that big of a bill before. And, and what's, what's horrifying about it is, um, that's not like a one-time bill, that's a yearly thing. Like, because my allergies are so bad that I will be taking these shots forever, right? This is not gonna get any better. Um, it's just gonna get less bad. I get called, it is a bad moment, right? So I get called back to the small room, the nurse takes my vitals, I'm still looking at my numbers. Did I add those up right? And um, Mr. Kuhn, it's time to go back to get your breathing test, and I say, whoa, 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 I need to talk to a doctor before we do any tests, because I just saw how much this is gonna cost me, right? I need to talk to a doctor. Doctor comes in. And uh, he starts explaining, how are you doing? Have you been doing the shots? I've been doing the shots weekly. Great, since November 7th when I got started. And, um, and I say, you know what, before we go any further, we, we need to talk about cost. Like, cause this is, this is I, I didn't get an estimate of expenses when we first started this, I just got it, this is, this is bad. And he says, I, I, Mr. Kuhn, I, I don't talk about costs. And I said, well, what? I mean, I'm thinking it, it's your office, it, it, you talk about cost, right? No, I gotta go get the office manager. So he gets up to leave and as he starts to walk out the door, he kind of turns and it's sort of a parting word. He says something to the effect of, uh, and, and Mr. Kuhn, I, 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 you should probably apologize to the, the nurses because they were kind of offended and, and, and troubled by, 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 by you. And I'm looking at it thinking, what? I'm the one who just got handed the bill. What, what's, and, and Everyone has a button, I, here's mine. And he goes, you know, as a man of God, I'd hope that you wanna, wouldn't want to offend. I'm not a, I'm a dude who just got handed a bill for almost seven grand who, who, who can't breathe very well. Don't, don't man of God me, just, just talk to Andy, please. I'd appreciate that. That's what's running through my head, right? Just, <sighs> he found a button. I, so, I tell him, you know what, if I've offended the nurses, I need to talk to the nurses and apologize, I need to understand, but, but go get the office manager, we'll get this sorted. Like, I, I haven't raised my voice, I haven't said anything crass or rude, I haven't really said much, right? I just, I've just looked kind of in a bad mood. It happens, you get handed a bill, it happens, right? Um, so, office manager comes in and explains uh, the estimate of cost what, or what they would bill to the insurance company and that uh, it would come back actually less than that. And so instead of being nigh on seven grand, it might be more like four, but they wouldn't know until they build it. Welcome to American Healthcare. All right, they're not quite sure what it's gonna cost, but you need it, so here you go. And <sighs> I'm talking to this, this office manager, and that's when I make the connection, 11-7. Does it mean anything? Did you, was anyone choosing health insurance this last year? You know what that was? Open enrollment, right? If they had told me this number then, I could have picked a different insurance plan. Because you pick a different insurance plan when you're diagnosed with a chronic expensive condition called the need to breathe, and uh, <laughs> you gotta pay for it, right? And, and so I, I realized this as she's talking to me, and I'm doing my best not to like, I've gone from scared and shocked, and I'm, I'm getting a little bit angry because I've just been like, as a man of God, and now I see like, oh, not having a good morning. 
Office Manager explains that the costs are going to be less. And then she says, you know, as a nurses here at staff here, we just want to have fun with our patients. We just want to like, take care of our patients, have fun with our patients. And I'm sitting here thinking it's healthcare. Sometimes it's not fun, right? But ah, calm, chill, trying not to make it worse, right? And, um, and she said, you know, if I, as she, left, she was leaving, she said, I could let myself out. And, uh, and I said, wait a minute, like, a, I need to apologize to the nurses, and B, I haven't had that test done yet. Like, we don't know if this is working at all. And, but she was like, ready to like hustle me out of the office. I apologized to the three nurses. I, I was telling, you know, I was responding in a shock at such an expensive bill, and, and I probably came off as very cold, and I apologized. And, and I apologized to the three nurses, and um, took the test. I found out that indeed, the very expensive inhaler is working, so I get to continue to pay for it. And uh, you know, when you know how much you're paying for every inhalation off that inhaler, you inhale real deep. <laughs> and then I, I paid my bill and I left. In, in retrospect, I, I had a few thoughts. I was just shaken by the day. Um, first, make sure y'all ask for estimates costs. They, had, they weren't going to offer it to me until I asked, and they just, just asked for estimates. That's like my practical advice for the day. It was impressive uh, how much they just wanted to make it better and get me out of there. <laughs> and it's amazing, it was amazing to myself how quickly I went from like gracious and calm to like shocked and responding out of fear. Like I don't think of, that's the strongest like anger, fear response I've had in years. Um, it was, uh, it was, and I got to tell you, I don't want to go back, right? My, I don't want to go back. My association with that place is that that's the place where everything went off the rails, and, um, and their association with me is that I'm a jerk. Like, when they see Andy Kuhn, they, they, they're just, he's the jerk. He, he showed up, and he was cold and, and angry, and, and they, they don't want to see me. Right? It is an act of forgiveness that I'm not telling you which office it is. Don't ask me for a recommendation. We just won't talk about it. It's better that way. Um, and I'm not. And if you go there, great. I hope they treat you well. Like I'm not. I'm. I'm just not going to get into that. That's that's an act of forgiveness. It is a commitment to reconciliation that I will go back um, because I will go back and. Uh, it is my commitment to trying to rebuild what is broken. Plus, you know, even if I went somewhere else, you know what it costs to go to a new doctor. Like, the, the, looking at you for the first time, that's a thousand bucks. Like, so I've, I've, I'm stuck, right? The folk of that office, their experience of me is that I am a jerk. It is, I asked them to do it was inconvenient to give them um, an estimate of cost, it, to talk about cost at all, and, and that's their only experience with me. It wasn't a good day, right? And, uh, it, yeah. So if everyone wishing me happy birthday this year didn't see me say much, that'd be why. Reading the research of a fellow by the name of John A. Powell, he points out how um, a lot of the divisions that cause so much trouble in our society today, amongst ourselves, is our ability to see those people as other as less than, right? If you fill in the blank, don't tell me what it is, but if you fill in the blank, those darn, right? Whoever you fill in the blank with right there, your ability to see those people as other, it becomes a way to say they are less. Whatever, whoever we're labeling like that, we, they don't have names, they're just those folk, those labeled, right? They're the ones who are messing things up. We have a natural inclination to sort out our world, to categorize. That, that's going to happen no matter what. The problem is, is when we sort and categorize in a way that takes people and makes them less than. And we can, I can tell you how, how this actually functions. Uh, who here has been in an MRI machine? It's a wonderful little tube to hang out in, right? What they can do is they can put a TV in the MRI. I don't know why they don't put a TV in every MRI. It'd make it so much better. But they can put like a TV in an MRI, and it's called an fMRI, a functional MRI. And they scan your brain, how your brain is reacting to what's on the TV. And so if you put someone in an MRI and you scan how they're reacting to what's on the picture, if you show someone a picture of people just like them, 
whatever us is, right, the part, there's a part of the brain that responds, and that's the part of the brain that thinks about people, right, other people. If you ask the person who is them, who is the labeled person, who is those so-and-sos, right, and you show them a picture of that, it's a different part of the brain that responds. It's the part of the brain that thinks about things, right? The difference between thinking about your brother and your truck. And, and so our ability to, cat that we categorize people, that's going to happen, that we categorize life. How we categorize the story we tell that decides who is us and who is those people, those other people. Like, we start thinking about those other people, and, and our brain starts thinking about them as less, as objects, as things. We don't need to respect them. They don't respect us. They're the ones causing all of the problems. So there, there's your depressing news of the day. The good news is that this varies by person because pe different people have different understandings of, of us. Like, who is we? Who is... And, and, um, Back to my birthday. To those nurses, their temptation, I don't know if they gave into it or not, but their temptation is to see me as them, right? Because they've already told me that we are the fun-loving nurses and you are the person who is angry, right? Cold, and you have broken our mojo. Like, their temptation to see me as other and less, and let's just get, hustle him out of here. The way that I am tempted to see this office is a bunch of incompetent jerks, not a place that I would ever recommend to see them as less. Those people who don't take care of people like my, we, we here, we take care of people with those people, right? Those are, they don't want to see me and I don't want to see them. And it would be very easy to leave it at that. But what do we read in scripture, right? The better story that we read in scripture is that everyone is made in the image of God. That is a story of what is true and beautiful and good. And that the way that we love God, to serve, to respect God, is to love people who bear the image of God. Right? The first power of sin is lies, if you think about it. Here, have an apple. won't cause a problem. And, and, and the lie that we're grappling with here is, you know, those people. They're, they're just those people. They're, they're less. And the truth is, is that they're made in the image of God and need to be treated like us. And, and so I have to choose, and it's a, choo it's a choice I have to make. Right? Do I give in the temptation to see those nurses or... Or give them a chance and go back, and I'm going to go back, right? I will go back. It's already scheduled. I'm going back for my checkup in the middle of the summer, and uh, I'm not particularly excited about it, but uh, that's what it means to believe they're made in the image of God, is to give them another chance and, and, and to start trying to build a better relationship. However, if they're incompetent, I'm out. Like, you, this, this is my health. I'm not... <laughs> Over the next weeks... Up until Easter, we're going to discuss how to love our neighbors, specifically our neighbors who are in poverty. But before we can get into this, like we're going to be talking about the way that uh, t charity can be toxic. Because you know how this works. You help someone once, they're thankful. You help them, help them twice, they expect you help them a third time, and then you either keep on helping them and you've established a, a very broken relationship that we have the power and then they have their... Or, or you stop and then everyone's angry because they stopped getting it, right? T charity can get very toxic, can't it? Right? it is how, we're going to be grappling with how do we help people in ways that work, that are effective, that are faithful, that respect people. But before we can touch any of this, we have to be very clear that we are talking about people made in the image of God. And that sounds so blazingly simple, right? If I asked anyone walking in the church, is everyone made in the image of God? You'd go, of course, Pastor Andy. You got anything interesting to talk about? But the reality is we are completely capable of reducing people to others, to seeing them as others, to see them as things, as less than, right? Whether it's someone who is messing up our mojo, messing up our day, not going along with how we usually, uh, how we do things. It could be, uh, and, and yeah. A part of what drives this is how much interaction we have with people, too. Like, the, the nurses up at that office, they've had one interaction with me now. One. That's it. Right? And, and that, they form their opinion based on that. How many interactions have you had with me? Right? I've just told you about the worst day I've had in years. And do you now think I'm an angry jerk? That's it. You're out. Andy, you're a loser. We're done with you. Call the DS. No. Why? Because you have more experience than just that one moment, right? If I told you that story the first Sunday I was here, it hadn't happened yet. The point being, if I'd started out with that, that would have been a problem, right? But 
we don't judge people by their single worst moment. And, and that is the challenge because if you think about when we interact with people in need, when are we interacting with them? When they're in need, right? And when are we most likely to go from graceful, calm, got our stuff together, to scared and angry? It's when we're cornered and we're in need, right? And so this is the challenge. When we talk about people in poverty and serving people in poverty, we're talking about pe interacting with people, but probably for the first time, and doing it when they are at their worst. And what is comfortable in that moment is what that office tried to do with me. Like, I, the nurse, the, it's the most telling moment of the entire day, is the office manager says, we're fun-loving, that's what we are, and when we're done here, you can let yourself out. It was easier for her to just get rid of the, the angry guy than to do what was needed, which was for me to reconcile with the nurses and then do the test that was needed. Right? When we hit this moment where we have this one experience with a, bad per with a person that goes bad, it is easier just to try to glide past it and get beyond it than to buckle down and say, this person is made in the image of God and we need to give them a second and third and fourth chance because they are made in the image of God. It is a choice that we have to make because it won't come naturally, won't come easily, right? We are going to talk about poverty over the next weeks, but we need to start by saying we are always talking about people made in the image of God who deserve respect and patience, people who do not deserve to be judged by their worst moment in the same way I, don't, I hope you will never judge me by mine. Amen.